Hi there everybody. Fat Shark have just announced their new Dominator HD FPV goggle and it promises a lot for the future of HD in FPV. In this video I want to talk through all the information we have about this product and this HD system right now and to give you my thoughts on what I think this means for the future of the industry. It's a lot to cover in one video so let's get right into it. So this is the new product that Fat Shark announced just a day or two ago, the Fat Shark Dominator HD goggle. And it promises a lot of things. It promises a brand new low latency 1080 resolution HD video link, USB-C video out, HD DVR in the goggles, and support for beta flight canvas mode. Let's take a deeper look at the technology that underpins this new system and see what it means for our hobby. The first thing to cover is that the Fat Shark Dominator goggles do not appear to have been designed or manufactured by Fat Shark. Instead, they are simply a rebadge of another product that was announced much more quietly at the same time. This other product is the Walk Snail Avatar HD system. And if we look at the Fat Shark Dominator goggles and compare it to an image of the Walk Snail Avatar goggles, you can see the striking similarities. These Fat Shark goggles are probably a, a rebadged, maybe slightly customized version of the Avatar HD goggles. If you go to Walk Snail's website, and I'll put a link down in the video description, you can find some more information about their Avatar HD system. And it looks to be a combination of a camera and a VTX. And the VTX looks to be a single board 25.5 millimeter M2 whoop mount VTX. It appears to include DVR. There's an SD card slot in the VTX for, for storing video and diversity transmission. And is probably feature comparable to the DJI Air unit. And we'll talk about why that might be later on. Hopefully they've been able to fix the SD card slow error. If you want to stay up to date with the technology behind the Fat Shark Dominator goggles and the Avatar HD system, make sure you hit the subscribe button because I'm going to be doing follow-up videos as more information on this new system becomes available. Walk Snail is actually not a, a new company. It's a spin-out of Cadex. And there's lots of evidence for this. The original phone number on the Walk Snail website for the Contact Us page is a number that's owned by uh, Ivy Zhang, the sales manager for Calix FPV. And, and this number's since been changed, but an archived version of it is still available. The cameras pictured for the Avatar system are the Nebula Pro Nano, the new Nebula Pro Nano, and the Cadex Air Unit light camera, which we know to be a Nebula Pro underneath. The antennas pictured are those that are currently supplied with the Cadex Vista VTX, and they have the Walk Snail logo on them. Cadex have previously stated that they are working on canvas mode for DJI FPV, and it's interesting that this new product also supports beta flight canvas mode. Cadex's logo is a snail, so there's a definite strong link there between Walk Snail and Cadex. You might also be interested to know that both Cadex and Walk Snail, the companies, were registered by, uh, by someone who works for DJI. The hardest part of HD FPV is the low latency video link. And today, this requires custom ASICs, which are application specific integrated circuits, or custom chips, to enable the video encoding to be done fast enough to keep the latency acceptable. So you can't use general purpose, commercially available hardware. You need to use a custom piece of silicon to do the encoding. And there are currently two chipsets that can do this and are used in FPV. The first is the HD0 chipset made by Divimath. And we know it's capable of 720p at 60 frames per second or 1080p at 30 frames per second. And the other chipset is the DJI P1 chipset, which is used in the Air Unit, the Cadex Vista, and the DJI goggles. And this is capable of 720p at 120 frames per second, and 25 or 50 megabits per second transmission rate. The new Avatar system from Walk Snail appears to use the DJI P1 chipset, based on the specifications and just everything that we know about the look and feel of the new unit. 
ASICs are basically impossible to clone. So if they are using the P1 chip, it must be sourced from DJI. And as far as I can tell, there is no way that a company like Walksnail would have had the resources to develop their own chipset. So I think we can be fairly confident that they're getting it from a much larger, much more well-resourced company like DJI. So what's going on? Up until now, DJI has been the manufacturer for all of the DJI FPV products, the Cadex Vista and the Air Unit and the DJI Camera. And Cadex has simply resold these products to customers. They've not, as far as we know, manufactured the products themselves. They're not responsible for the firmware development of the products. DJI has been in charge of everything apart from just the retail of the products. It now appears that manufacturing and development of the VTX has been handed off to Walksnail. I think DJI are almost certainly providing their P1 chipset to do the video encoding, but Walksnail appear to now own the firmware for this, this system. And that means that they've been able to change it. They've been able to implement things like beta flight canvas mode, and they may also have been able to enable a 1080p mode that already existed in the P1. This is probably at 60 frames per second. Hopefully they've also been able to fix the SD card slower. DJI must have provided some level of support to Cadex or Walksnail in terms of maybe source code for the firmware and reference designs for the electronics, but we really can't know how much of this has been re-implemented by Walksnail or Cadex. And this might explain why some of the features in the videos we've seen so far, the system looks somewhat unfinished. It may be that a significant portion of the firmware is actually being re-implemented by Walksnail or Cadex. What's Fat Shark's play here? Well, I think Fat Shark are rebranding a version of Walksnail's avatar goggles. It might be a customized version, it might have some unique features, but fundamentally it's based on that product, the Walksnail avatar system. Fat Shark look to be primarily doing marketing and maybe some distribution of the product, and it doesn't look like the avatar system is going to be exclusive to Fat Shark in any way. Flywu are already advertising a version of the avatar goggles themselves. It is going to be interesting to see if Fat Shark bring any unique features to their version of the goggles that might push us in that direction rather than uh, the standard avatar goggles. And what's DJI's play? I think DJI are actually being quite smart here. They are a company with processes and procedures built around selling high value products that retail for hundreds or thousands of dollars in significant volume. And that's how their business has been built and that's how their business will be structured internally. I think that FPV VTXs and FPV products in general simply don't have a large enough price times volume, so total kind of revenue capacity, to be attractive or viable for them. I don't think DJI can justify the expense of supporting FPV products in-house because they don't sell sufficient volume of them and the margin isn't there to justify the type of cost that DJI probably build in to supporting their products. So to solve this problem, they need to sell the high value chipset to another company which has a different cost structure and let that company take care of the manufacturing, retail, development and customer support of that product and take on all that expense. And a company like Walksnail or Cadex can potentially develop and support a system like the Avatar system for much less than it would cost DJI to do it just because they're gonna have a lot less burdensome processes and procedures within that much smaller company. And finally, what does this mean for the future of HDFPV? Well, I can't see any reason why this new Avatar HD system couldn't be fully compatible with all the existing DJI FPV products that are available right now. They all use the same OcuSync 3.0 technology, the goggles, the VTXs, um, and I imagine the technology inside Avatar is not vastly different from the technology that's been inside the Air Unit and Cadex Vista all this time. 
I think they would be crazy not to make the products compatible because there's a big installed user base of DJI FPV and if you make the products compatible, you can really accelerate mass adoption of Avatar, start selling VTXs and goggles off the bat immediately to people who already have some elements of the DJI system and are happy to buy a better goggle with a better screen or a VTX with better features. New firmware features like the canvas mode and 1080p mode may or may not be backported to the Air unit and the Vista. I have no doubt the hardware is capable, but they may want to keep those features for Avatar to try and encourage you to buy new VTXs and goggles from them. It remains to be seen which companies are going to be able to manufacture compatible products with Avatar. I imagine it's going to be a very short list. If, if what we've seen with the DJI FPV system is anything to go by, it's likely that we're going to see just a couple of companies manufacturing. And that's probably important because DJI want to keep control of their IP and they probably want to have as few partners in the FPV space as possible in order to keep things simple um, for them. It's better to deal with one company that has a lot of volume than several companies all with less volume. So I would imagine that this new Avatar system is probably going to be manufactured mainly by Walksnail and that other companies may be allowed to make cameras for the system or something like that. Hopefully this new way of working where DJI supports the FPV hobby through partners like Cadex and Walksnail is going to be really positive for FPV moving forward. We've always struggled with the fact that FPV is a relatively small market and we're competing with big strategic objectives within a large organization like DJI. And that can make it very difficult to get new features and new products that are FPV focused given priority within the company. If DJI are now working with Walksnail, Walksnail can be a small FPV focused company. They can do the firmware development like canvas mode. They can do the product development that we in FPV are asking for, but they can have access to the technology and proprietary ASICs that DJI have in order to enable these really incredible HD FPV systems. So I think this can be the best of both worlds and it gives us in FPV access to the R&D IP of DJI, which is obviously tremendously valuable, but whilst also having a company that's small enough to be FPV focused and where we can ask for new features and new products that we want, and be reasonably confident that we're going to be prioritized as a group. So overall, I'm super pleased with this. Let me know down in the comments what you think. Let me know if you agree or disagree with my speculation in this video. And uh, as always, I wish you all very, very happy flying.